is Angel, and today we're going to talk about histrionic personality disorder. So, I was just diagnosed recently with these traits, and I flip around from dependent personality disorder to borderline personality disorder traits and histrionic personality traits. Now, when I went to the hospital, they give me a few readings, and there is one that is not the internet's version of histrionic personality and I also have the internet's version of the personality disorder. Now personally I like the reading that they gave me about histrionic personality disorder that is the non-internet version. I find the internet version really really offensive. <laughs> So I'm going to read you um, the internet's version of histrionic personality and then I'll read the other version of a histrionic personality and you'll see the difference between the two. Okay, so starting with what is histrionic personality disorder. Um, HPD is one of a group of conditions called dramatic personality disorders. Oh, sorry. This is the internet version. People with these disorders have intense, unstable emotions and distorted self-images. For people with histrionic personality disorder, their self-esteem depends on the approval of others and does not arise from a true feeling of self-worth. They have an overwhelming desire to be noticed and often behave dramatically or inappropriately to get attention. The word histrionic means dramatic or theatrical. This disorder is more common in women than in men and is usually evident by early adulthood. What are the symptoms of histrionic personality? In many cases, people with histrionic personality disorder have good social skills. However, they tend to use these skills to manipulate others so that they can be the center of attention. A person with this disorder might also be uncomfortable unless he or she is the center of attention, dress provocatively, and or exhibit inappropriately seductive or flirtatious behavior, shift emotions rapidly, act very dramatically as though performing before an audience with exaggerated emotions and expressions, yet appears to lack sincerity. Be overly concerned with physical appearance. Okay, yes, I am. Um, constantly seek reassurance or approval. Be gullible and easily influenced by others. Be excessively sensitive to criticism or disapproval. Has, or sorry, have a low tolerance for frustration and be easily bored by routine, often beginning projects without finishing them or skipping from one event to another. They don't think before acting, make rash decisions, be self-centered and rarely show concern for others, have difficulty maintaining relationships, often seeming fake or shallow, in their dealings with others, threaten or attempt suicide to get attention. Okay, so with these symptoms, I'm going to tell you which ones that I do have. So, I don't like being the center of attention. I never have. When I was a kid, I used to hide under the tables. Especially when teachers called me. I don't like being called upon. I do not want to be in the center of attention. I do dress provocatively, but I don't exhibit inappropriately seductive or flirtatious behavior. My emotions do shift rapidly. Um, I don't act very dramatic. At least I don't think I do. Um, sorry, guys. Yeah, my eyes. <laughs> okay, be overly concerned with physical appearance, yes, constantly seek reassurance or approval, mm, yeah, 
Kind of. Be gullible and easily influenced by others. I used to be. Um, I am excessively sensitive to criticism and disapproval. I have a low tolerance for frustration and can be easily bored by routine. I do often finish things and I don't, or I do often start things and I do not finish them. Um, but I'm trying to work on that. I don't think before I act. I do tend to make rash decisions. I'm not really self-centered. At least I don't think I am, but I could be. Um, I don't have difficulty maintaining relationships. I actually have friendships and stuff that um, I've had for years. I do not threaten or attempt suicide to get attention. Okay, so what causes, look at my hair, boop, histrionic personality disorder. Hold on guys, intermission. Intermission. Okay, what causes histrionic personality? The exact cause of histrionic personality disorder is not known. But Many mental health professionals believe that both learned and inherited factors may play a role in its development. Okay, for example, the tendency for histrionic personality disorder to run in families suggests that a genetic susceptibility for the disorder might be inherited. However, the child of a parent with this disorder might simply be repeating learned behavior. Other environmental factors that might be involved include a lack of criticism or punishment as a child. Pi positive reinforcement that is given only when a child completes certain approved behaviors. And unpredictable attention given to a child by his or her parents. All leading confusion about what types of behavior earn parental approval. Now that might be right because my father was an alcoholic and I would never know when he would be okay with me and when he would not be okay with me. And I feel like this is where my dependent personality also came from because in there it's like you learn how to get out of the way or to not be like heard and stuff. And that related to me strongly because when my dad would drink and he'd be watching a game, you would just know not to go in the room because he would get mad if you made any kind of noise, any distraction anything like that, he'd get pissed off and it wouldn't be good for you. So I learned at a very young age how to stay out of the way. Okay? So how is histrionic personality diagnosed? If symptoms are present, the doctor will begin an evaluation by performing a complete medical history and physical examination. Although there are no laboratory tests to specifically diagnose personality disorders, the doctor might use various diagnostic tests to rule out physical illness as a cause of the symptoms. If the doctor finds no physical reasons for the symptoms, he or she might refer the person to a psychiatrist or psychologist. Healthcare professionals who are specially trained to diagnose and treat mental illnesses. Sure. I don't have a lot of faith in these kind of people. Um, psychiatrists and psychologists use specially designed interview and assessment tools to evaluate a person for a personality disorder. Mm, sure. They're a little hokey questions about on a scale 1 to 10, how are you doing this? On a scale 1 to 10, what do you mean? You know, <laughs> I don't like them. So, how is it treated? In general, people with histrionic personality disorder do not believe they need therapy. Sure. 
Well, I don't. I don't believe that it helps. I don't believe it doesn't do... Like, it doesn't do anything. Like, I go to the hospital, they kick me out in five days. How does that help me? How? You've done nothing but give me a bunch of catalogs to read. And they don't even help you with it. They don't go through it with you. They don't do anything. And when I was in the hospital, one of my favorite dresses was stolen. And that's not the first time they've done this either. They stole my friend's money too. So she had like a bag of cash and I guess one of the cleaners were cleaning her room and they stole her money. So the Peter Lougheed Hospital in Calgary, the cleaners steal your shit. Don't go there. It's awful. So now I don't have that dress anymore, and I'm on welfare. How the fuck am I supposed to fucking replace it? Sorry, I'm, like, really mad, but yeah. Anyways, where were you? Where were we? Oh. They also tend to exaggerate their feelings and to dislike routine, which makes following, which makes following a treatment plan difficult. However, they might seek help if depression, possibly associated with a loss or a failed relationship or another problem caused by the thinking and behavior causes them distress. I don't even go to them for that. Um, psychotherapy, a type of counseling, which I've covered before in my videos, is generally the treatment choice for histrionic personality disorder. The goal of treatment is to help the individual uncover the motivations and fears associated with his or her thoughts and behaviors, and to help the person learn to relate to others in a more positive way. Uh, medication might be used to treat the distressing symptoms such as depression and anxiety that might co-occur with this disorder. Okay, so when I went into the hospital and they told me I had all these personality disorders or whatever traits, I was devastated. And all I could think of was, I'm going to have to live with all of these, these three, plus a PTSD, plus CADD, like, oh my god, the anxiety, the schizophrenia, I'm going to have to live with all of this in my head. And it's never going to get better, and I'm just going to be like this forever. I'm always going to be dysfunctional. I'm always going to have these problems. I'm always going to fucking, I don't know, just all this crap. And all they can say to you is, there's no medication to treat personality disorders. There's nothing we can do except for DBT and counseling, like talk therapy, and that's about it. No medication, nothing. And I'm like, well, that's great. So it's basically a part of me then. This is who I am because your personality is who you are. So it's like, great. So from like when I was a little kid, I've always been messed up. Great. Love it. Thanks, guys. Love it. Okay, so now we're going to move on to what are the complications of histrionic personality disorder. So HPD can affect a person's social or romantic relationships and how a person reacts to losses or failures. People with this disorder are at a higher risk than the general population to suffer from depression. Well, that's nice. It's great. Can't wait. What is the outlook for people with histrionic personality disorder? Many people with this disorder are able to function well socially and at work. Those with severe cases, however, might experience significant problems in their daily life. So that's me. I have significant problems with all of it. I am quite severe and I can't work. 
and I find it very hard to talk to people about this. I do have friends with borderline, but I don't have anybody that I know with histrionic or dependent, so that makes it a little hard. I did start a group on Facebook for dependent personality disorder, and I haven't gotten any hits on it yet, but hopefully I will. And yeah, so that was the internet version of that one. Okay, so now I'm going to read the non-internet version. So this is the version that my psychiatrist gave me at the hospital. So what it says is HPD is all about repression. In other words, it's all about stuffing down your emotions. As a child or through various experiences, you probably learned that sharing your emotions and being vulnerable is not safe. And that is exactly what I learned when I was a child. When I was a child, you would not cry. Crying is a bad emotion. You don't do it. You go to your room, and when you're done crying, you can come out. That's how I grew up. You don't cry. You don't get mad. You don't get nervous. All the negative feelings you're not allowed to feel. And if you do, you either go to your room until you can compose yourself or you just stuff it all down and pretend like you're fine. Yeah, fake it till you make it, guys. <laughs> so, maybe your parents or the people around you didn't react well to your feelings. Maybe you learned that sharing your feelings doesn't get your needs met. Maybe you learned that sharing your feelings results in humiliation and rejection by others. Yes. Either way, you started stuffing your feelings away deep down inside yourself. This is where histrionic personality disorder comes in. HPD can be understood as a strategy people use to not have to address those scary emotions buried deep down inside. You can imagine HPD as a mask that people present to themselves and to the world. This mask you can look this mask can look different for different people. And it exists on a continuum. So here's the I don't know, can you see that? The histrionic disorder personality mask and it's like common ground and there's some info on here what HPD can look like um, yeah so I'm gonna read those so common ground is um, stuffing down emotions and minimizing or ignoring issues all these strategies serve to distract yourself and others from what's really going on you want to avoid facing your true emotions and challenges. If my life looks okay from the outside, then it is okay. So HPD can look like perfectionism, just wanting things to be just right. Seeking approval from others, people pleasing, not being vulnerable with trusted others, avoiding sharing your feelings and issues by changing the subject, keeping things surface level. Not being in touch with your own emotions, desires, and opinions, being easily influenced by others, being exuberant, having a big personality. Others might describe you as theatrical, drawing attention to yourself through various means, being very concerned with looking perfect and having material wealth, flashy clothes, car, etc. Being easily bored by routine, often jumping from one project or idea to another. So most of the info you find on the internet will describe the end of the spectrum of HPD. So with those, um, yes, I like looking good, I like flashy clothes, I like wealth, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I like looking good. I like my place to look good. I want it to look perfect. And 
I will go to great lengths to make it that way. Um, as for people pleasing, yes, I do that. I like to keep things at a surface level. I don't like telling even my boyfriend what's really going on. And I've been hiding this for so long that I don't even know how to get in touch with my emotions anymore. I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to go into the emotions that I bottled up because I'm so used to it. It's almost like subconscious. So, yeah. So, what are the consequences of HPD? No matter where you fall on this continuum and which histronic strategies you use, you can run into significant difficulties. Repressed feelings don't just fade away. They get bottled up inside of you. Just like trying to push a beach ball underwater, eventually you lose control and the ball suddenly pops back up to the surface. And if you're minimizing or ignoring a problem, you're obviously not taking proactive steps to solve it. Often the beach ball, often the beach ball that is your repressed feelings will pop back up when we least expect it. Maybe you or others around you notice that you blow up, blow up in moments when others wouldn't. Such as when faced with a minor inconvenience, repressing your feelings is exhausting and eventually you can't hold everything in anymore. So having a meltdown around something unrelated to your issues feels like a safe choice. Yes, I do that a lot. I get angry for no reason and it's bad <laughs> it's really bad and it's uncalled for and like I said I have a lot of maladaptive behaviors that I'm trying to work through okay so these meltdowns might impact your ability to have healthy relationships with others. You might have reactions to things that appear to others to be blown out of proportion or appear to mismatch the situation. But if people knew that you've been bottling up your feelings around a variety of other issues, your reaction would make more sense to them. When you have a meltdown, about something, you might not have the skills to cope with it. Since you've spent a lot of time, a lot of your, sorry, since you've spent a lot of your life repressing your feelings, you probably don't have a lot of practice managing your emotions and engaging in healthy coping strategies. Additionally, additionally, <laughs> Additionally, not addressing your feelings and issues probably means that you have a tendency to repeat unhelpful patterns. However, it's important to make a distinction between repression and suppression. So, what is that? Repression is an unconscious process, whereas suppression is a conscious one. Conscious... Oh my God, conscious one. Like I said, so when I do that stuff, it's not because I'm trying to get back at you. It's not because I'm trying to manipulate you. It's not because I'm trying to be a bitch. It's because I subconsciously do it. I've been doing it since I was a child. So I'm not just going to stop doing that. It's going to take work, I guess. It's going to take, that's what they tell me anyway. It's going to take a lot of work. It's going to take a lot of time. And it's not going to happen overnight because you are trying to unlearn a lifetime of issues. Okay? So, yeah. I'm going to make part two because this is getting super long. Okay? So I will catch you guys later. Bye!